Do you currently have a switch in use that you're going to reprovision somewhere else? You need to do a factory reset, and let me show you how to do that next. You have a switch that you're using somewhere else, but you're going to need to reprovision it. Well, it's easy. You go ahead and remove all the configuration on it, and if it's a switch, you also have to remove the VLAN database, and then you can get to configuring it. Probably a shorter and easier way to do something like that is actually going to be doing a factory reset on this. Now, that's not the only situation that you'll end up doing a factory reset. Let's say, for example, you bought a switch off of eBay, and now you can't gain access to it because the password is set, and you don't know what that password is going to be uh, as well. So what you also end up doing there, again, is a factory reset. So in our situation, we're reprovisioning the switch. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here it is. On the screen, you'll actually see that this switch we're actually using in production right now, but we're going to move it to another part of our building. And if we take a look, there's already plenty of configuration on this. So if I just do a show run for a short for show running dash config, then it's building the configuration. And you can see it's actually been configured with a username and a password uh, as well. You can even see that it's set up for SSH with the certificate uh, uh, too. You can even see that, well, there's some VLANs also set up on all the ports that we actually have them set up on. Uh, and so everything is there, even an interface VLAN configuration, an access control list, you name it. There's plenty of configuration on here that looks like it'd take a little bit of time for us to go ahead and have to manually reconfigure that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do that factory reset. Now, this is what it comes down to though. This is a Cisco 3750 switch. So I'm going to show you how to do a factory reset on 3750 switch. And well, just as an example, but the real way that you have to do it depends on that switch model, which means you'll need to go ahead and do your favorite search engine search to go ahead and figure out which uh, particular model that you have and follow those directions as well. Now, for us though, it's fairly simple and it's easy. So we're going to do this in a couple of different steps here. So if we take a look at my wider screen on my wider shot again, you'll see I have a couple of things in place. This red cable right here that you actually see, that is going to be connected into the console port on the switch. And then on the other end of my MacBook, I need an adapter that allows me to connect that USB port onto it too. So that's the physical side of something that I need. But the other things that I need, of course, is software. Now, if you're running a Windows machine, you may choose, of course, PuTTY. I'm on a Mac OS machine, and I'm actually using a terminal program called Serial that also allows me to gain access so I can see what it is that I'm doing. Now, once we have that in place, the procedure is actually a fairly complex procedure in this sense, is that we have to hold the mode button down, and the mode button is right here to this side of the actual console cable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the actual physical power from the switch itself. Then I'm going to hold the mode button down. Now I'm using this pen because if I use my finger, it actually is going to hurt my fingertip. So I'm going to use the pen and push that mode button in. Then I'm plugging the power back in and you're going to hear it ramp up. And while it's actually doing the ramp up that it needs, what should happen after a few, se a few seconds or maybe even a couple of minutes is that the screen will begin to change in what we're actually taking a look at. Now, what we're looking for, of course, is the prompt to change from the uh, uh, configuration prompt that is on right now, or actually the privilege prompt that is on. And we should actually see it kind of go through the process of what it needs to. And then when the screen actually begins to change, we can let go of the mode button that should bring us into the switch mode that we're actually looking for uh, as well. So that's what we have to do is just we have to hold this down. Now, the longer I hold this here with my finger, like I said, it will dig into my fingertip if I'm not very careful. So I just need to continue to hold this down until that changes. So it may take a little bit of time. You just have to be patient. All right, it's just changed on the screen and we can show that right now. We can then go ahead and then I can let go of this. And now we'll see we're at the prompt that we need to. So on the screen here, I just held it to that point and I saw where it said password recovery mechanism is now enabled and even tells me what I need to do to get this started. So because I need to get into the flash where I need to erase the config file 
as well as that VLAN, that VLAN.dat file is I need to go ahead and initialize the flash. So this may take a moment depending on, of course, the switch itself as we do this. And then it's gonna bring me to another prompt. And there we are, we're back at the actual switch prompt itself. Now I need to get access into flash and take a look around. So I'm gonna type in dir flash colon and now you can see that we have several files here. We're not gonna get rid of the first file, which of course is our image. We need to get rid of that vlan.dat and also the config.txt file is what we want. Now, if you're not sure, in other words, if this is a file that you are regularly using and you might use it again, you may want to back these two files up. Technically, really just the config.txt file. You don't have to wor worry too much about backing up the vlan.dat file but normally you could actually do that. And if you want to do that, you could actually do a rename and then config.txt here. Oops, I need to add in the flash colon config.txt. And then we'd actually tell it the new name that we're doing, which is gonna be flash colon config.txt.old, for example, okay? And that way you could actually go ahead and back it up on the same flash. I'm not gonna worry about doing that for right now. All right, now, once you actually have that all backed up here, if you wanted to choose to do that, then we can begin the deletion process. And what we do is we type in del flash config text. It's gonna say, hey, are you sure? We're gonna do a yes. And then it tells us deleted. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the vlan.dat. And then we're gonna do the same thing here, okay? Now those two are important. If you only go ahead and you delete the, the config.txt, you don't delete the vlan.dat, or you're gonna end up with partial configuration uh, you know, instead. So make sure you delete both of them. From this point, we're going to reboot the switch itself and this is where it will begin that loading process, and this takes a few minutes. Through the magic, of course, of our ability to control time here inside of TV land, we'll actually see us as we actually come back to the finished loading process. All right, so there we are. We're at the system configuration dialog. And for those of us that are, of course, used to working with Cisco switches, we know that this is a good symbol of, or a good uh, particular place for us to understand that this switch has been factor reset because it's asking me if I want to go into the initial configuration dialog. I do not, so I'm gonna simply type no. And now I'm already accessing the user mode of the switch. And I can do an enable, and then we'll do a show running dash config. And this way we can verify that the switch has been reset here. So notice that we no longer have any of the configuration on this particular switch uh, and is starting all over. Then if I do a show VLAN brief, I can verify that I do not have anything but the default VLANs on this switch as well. So this switch has been successfully factor reset. And now I have one of two options. If I'm the one reconfiguring it, I can start from scratch on a clean switch, or I'm handing this off to another technician to do it. They can start all over without having to worry if I've actually have anything set that would mess up their configuration as well. So hopefully you've actually learned how, of course, in this particular episode, to take a look at factor resetting a switch. If you wanna learn more, make sure you check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as hit the notification button itself to find out more about our videos as they get posted. Thank you for joining us.